on camera blue. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, a guide to cleaner, greener, better for you beauty. I try out all the things so you have a better idea of what to buy and what not to buy thanks to actually honest reviews. I'm gonna be comparing four different sets of bars today from least favorite to most favorite. I will have links to the products that I mention, and you can drive through and see the actual scorecards as well if you'll want to go in depth. And yes, I'm recording in a new space. The cat, Blue, is back in the picture, so hopefully you all are okay with that. Kicking it off with the Viore Hidden Waterfall Shampoo and Conditioner Bars. These received a 9 out of 20. I'm going to give you pros and cons. This is for fine hair, as it says in the video title. If you want to see my hair profile and my routine, all of those things factor into everything that I'm talking about here. You can check those also back at the scorecards. There is a fragrance-free version. The con here is that they were not transparent about the ingredients here, the word fragrance was inside. So it's sort of like a backhanded compliment of a review. I did see shine at first, but that ended up being a con, so that's another one. The shampoo and conditioner did apply really easily and it rinsed out pretty easily, or it seemed to rinse out really easily, so I didn't feel a lot of stripping on the hair after the shampoo, that squeaky feeling. Never a good sign in my experience. And then the conditioner, when it rinsed out, hair felt so silky. The shape of the conditioner bar I wasn't a huge fan of. It's very square with strong angles, but the shampoo little bar circle worked really well. Anything round, easy to hold, easy to kind of maneuver along the scalp and things like that, good. Cons here, this is not the most budget friendly of the bunch. It's certainly not the highest priced, but it's not the most budget friendly. 36 for the set currently, I believe. I use the shampoo primarily on the roots of the hair, so the crown of the head. The conditioner I would use on the ends. I don't want to put a lot of conditioner on my head because it just weighs things down. So I was really cautious about how I was using these. But I will say my hair just looked pretty greasy really quickly. Like it started strong with shine. And then after about week two, I test hair products for about a month. So it takes a minute to see results. Sometimes you got to test it for way longer if you're looking at growth types of shampoo products and things like that. But yeah, it's just started to not look so great after a minute. Instead of following through on boosting shine for my hair, again, this is a subjective part of it, but I'm trying to give you some honest feedback so you know what you're getting into. While I saw it shiny in the beginning, it just started looking really dull and definitely weighed down. This is the part where it always gets weighed down for me. I wasn't even putting a lot of product there. Scent is pretty strong. I liked the Hidden Waterfall scent to a degree, but it was even for me, I'm pretty sensitive scent wise, but I'm not hypersensitive. If you are, you cannot get a fragrance. <laughs> like, don't do it. I mean, I guess I can't say you can't. Do what you gotta do. But, you know, the fragrance free is gonna be the way for you because it's very strong. Like, you could smell it outside of the bathroom walking in. You're like, what? Whoa. Most importantly, I think because things were just a little too weighted down, I saw a little bit more fallout than I normally see. And that came on fast. So it was okay, a little bit dull volume loss, hair fallout. Now we're not saying clumps here. I am not saying that. And this is just my experience. It will be different for other people. People have very strong opinions when it comes to shampoo bars I found when I review them on this channel. So take it or leave it. It did not score well. It's the least favorite of the bunch. The Kitsch Rice Water Shampoo and Conditioner Bars. A lot of these are rice water based shampoo and conditioner bars, by the way. So the pros and cons here. First up, the score was a 12 out of 20. The pros, easy on the budget, 15 bucks each. You can get a discount when you subscribe and save. They have sales quite often. Great, easy application with both of these bars. Easy to work with, the rounded shape like a hockey puck. Really, really simple to use. I felt that slide over and deposit enough product. The conditioner went on and didn't put too much product, so they figured out the formula pretty nicely for working with it and application, I loved that. And then when I rinsed out the shampoo, I did not have that squeaky feeling, so it was going okay. But we get to the cons here, so a lack of transparency on the fragrance inside. There is another fragrance-free version here. You do not have to get the fragrance. I also felt like the vanilla smelled very fake to me and really off-putting. I didn't enjoy it, and that's something I'm big about. If I use a product like a shampoo or conditioner, I have to enjoy it. I've just, the older I get, the more I'm like, I really want this to be a good nice smelling experience. I don't know. I don't know what that is. There was a claim that was initially on the box I purchased that said these would last for a hundred washes. And I'm here to tell you in my experience, there's no way that is happening. And this is not even long hair. So, nor is it like super duper thick. So, no. 
The conditioner really did not rinse out well for me after a couple weeks. I started noticing that that was an issue. So I leaned more on the shampoo and used the leave-in conditioner, which is kind of where I've been heading anyway. After about a month of use though, even with the shampoo, my hair started getting weighed down again. Now you can always bring in a clarifying shampoo. I personally love to switch up my shampoo and conditioner because my hair responds well once I mix it up a little bit here and there. Nothing weekly, but definitely after a couple of months. So that seems to knock it back. But if I bring in something clarifying, that means I'm gonna have to color my hair again and I just don't wanna deal with it. It's still an option though. It's not like the worst case scenario. But the transparency, man, it was just lacking. Obviously no one's paid me to say the following. This is honest information. You're getting it always here. If you like that kind of thing and you want to see more of these types of reviews, you can support this channel by just hitting that like button. It's a big deal. And if you never want to miss anything, you can always subscribe too. Also, I would love to know what shampoo bars you're loving right now, shampoo and conditioner bars, and just include your type of hair as well. I assume you're watching this because you have fine hair, but if not, just sharing is caring and it really helps the community here. So next we're at High Bar. High Bar is a really interesting company. It's a different shape overall. It received a 15 out of 20. This is their moisture shampoo and conditioner set. The pros, 2650 combined, not terrible out of the entire bunch. Transparent ingredients, so transparent. Also very transparent on the eco-friendliness front, which I really appreciate. A lot of them were, but this was like above and beyond. Very easy to apply in my opinion. There's that teardrop shape that you're working with. It just sort of paints over the hair really nicely. I liked it and it's very different from like the hockey puck shape. So just a little thing that I liked. Claim says that these are gonna last up to 80 washes. I found these to hold on a little bit better. I wasn't running through product really quickly here, so I believe that it actually could hit that claim. And it's supposed to be safe for color treated hair, which I am very grateful for. Because I see brassiness really quickly in some shampoos and conditioners, you probably know this, you can just see it. It really takes a toll on the color. So this, I didn't see any brassiness coming through early. I didn't see roots coming through. It just, it did a good job with that and held up to the claim. Cons, the shampoo was a bit stripping on my hair. It got a little squeaky, which I don't really like, especially because I'm always trying to moisturize and nourish my hair. And the sad thing is that this ended up irritating my scalp. And as I'm testing these, some just do that. That's super subjective. Just because it happened to me doesn't mean it's gonna happen to you, but it'll get a little itchy right at the base of my scalp. And that's how I know I have to stop using them. Otherwise, they were a great product, so 15 out of 20, not bad, but then we get to my current favorite. Also the most expensive of the bunch, kind of annoying, I'm sure. 16 out of 20, it wasn't a 20 out of 20. None of these shampoo bars, there are a lot of claims, so many claims on these product pages, and they seem kind of outlandish to me. I haven't experienced 100% claim check and follow through for any of these products because those claims are like, your hair is gonna look insanely incredible after four or six weeks of use. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen drastic turnarounds, okay? So expectation setting, here we go. But the Super Zero Shampoo and Conditioner Bars, I have this for fine hair. It's the medium strength conditioner. These were really strong off the bat and they've stayed strong. And that's why they made it to the last round of Brits Picks out of the thousands of products that I try. Those are my current top 20 and expanded list is coming soon so you can access everything in the categories. These have been on there. So the pros, sustainability or the eco-friendliness, whatever you want to call it, real good. The shapes I really liked, they didn't go fast. They didn't melt away or get used up really quickly or disintegrate. I immediately, like I mentioned, saw a difference after using this. I was looking for, you know, shine and volume, but when I first washed my hair, it had a little bit more bounce to it. Now, it, it wasn't model hair, it just had a bounce. And you can tell, because you see your hair every day and you're like, whoa, that's different. And I was very pleasantly surprised. And I know when I call a best friend or my mom or somebody immediately after to be like, hey, this could be a really good one. It usually means it's gonna be a good one. So that happened here within 24 hours of use. Very transparent with their ingredients as well, how their product is made, how their packaging is created. There was no stripping of the hair. There was no kind of dryness that I saw. And it didn't weigh my hair down, which was great. So the only cons that I saw with these shampoo bars and conditioner bars, that they were very pricey. This is $56 for shampoo bars. It's a lot, I'm not gonna lie. I wish it was a little bit less expensive, but it's supposed to 
compensate for a certain amount of the liquid shampoo and conditioner. So it might look smaller, but it's kind of the same situation. I don't know. I haven't done a super duper in-depth test there. The volume claims also did not hold up. While I saw bounce, I didn't really see a lot of volume, but to be honest with you, so much of that falls into the tools that I use and the way that I style my hair. That has such a massive impact on how my hair looks and it can make or break it, even the type of hair dryer that I use. That applies to every bar mentioned, but with each of these, I used the same styling process. So I tried to have control variables for each of these. What are your current fave or least favorite shampoo bars? I know I already asked you that, but I really do wanna know that. I think that would be really interesting. Again, if you found this helpful, do take a minute and hit that like button. I will be right back here real soon with some more honest reviews. Until then, bye.